Joining us now on the line, Major Johnny Paulus, the Director of Public Affairs for Mississippi Highway Patrol. Major, how are you today, sir? Uh, good morning, Gerard. Doing well. Well, tell us about uh, how we did over the Labor Day weekend in terms of traveling the roadways in Mississippi. Well, I can tell you it was a very, very busy uh, travel enforcement period for all law enforcement throughout the state. Mm -hmm. um, we, we encountered a lot of traffic uh, on our roadways. And unfortunately, uh, it, was, it was a deadly weekend for us as well. Hmm. Well, I hate to hear that, uh, Major. Any particular area of the state that experienced uh, the greatest number of, of crashes and fatalities? Well, we, we had six fatalities statewide, and that's what the Mississippi Highway Patrol investigated on state, federal highways, and interstate systems. We, had, um, we actually had two fatalities in Tunica County, two in Grenada, and, and two in Lincoln County. Mm-hmm. Anything in particular, Major, you attribute this to? This was unexpected, well, was it not? Well, we actually had seven fatalities investigated for the 2020 enforcement period. Uh, so, you know, one is too many, Gerard, as, as, sure. as you well know. Sure. Uh, we did see a, uh, an increase in crashes investigated as well. But, but we, ha we have to emphasize and, and remind the motoring public that we're still dealing with recovery efforts in Louisiana mm -hmm. in regards to Hurricane Ida. So there is a tremendous volume of traffic, and, and, and as you well know, that definitely contributes to traffic congestion and delays on the roadway. So we're asking the motoring public to be mindful. We, we've gotten past the holiday weekend, but we're still encountering, again, a lot of traffic in regards to Hurricane Ida recovery efforts. I got you. I got you. So what advice do you have, Major, to the motoring public? Well, again, if traveling on the roadways, until we can get through this uh, with, with Hurricane Ida recovery efforts, we're just asking everyone to, to please put all good driving habits in place, um, keep in mind you're gonna come. You're gonna come in contact with with traffic jams, congestions. There's going to be delays, but the motoring public can help us if you can give yourself enough time to reach your destination. That helps law enforcement out tremendously, where they can focus on on other issues again with the recovery efforts. Oh, I got you. So, um, hmm. I, I, it's just it's so disheartening to hear that. I, I thought uh, every time you and I have talked on these major holidays, we seem to have been doing pretty well. Uh, really hate to hear that we kind of had a letdown here, but I, I guess with the, the volume of traffic and the storm that came through, uh, maybe this is uh, just a result of that, as you, as well, you indicated. Well, well, keep in mind, we still deal with distracted driving issues. Yeah. We're still dealing with... Uh, passengers, drivers not being restrained. And by the way, Gerard, you and I have discussed this topic before, but we're seeing, we're constantly seeing an increase in child restraint citations. Yeah. And, and we cannot place enough emphasis on, on the fact that these children rely on us to properly restrain them in a motor vehicle. Yeah. We really want to see those numbers go down. We want to see more children in Mississippi being properly restrained. Yeah. Golly. So what are the, what are the next big uh, travel weekends coming up that we need to be aware of? Well, you will, you will hear from the agency. Uh, Commissioner Tennell and Colonel Ginn are constantly working on campaigns to, to get the message out, as you well know, when it comes to safe driving. The drive campaign uh, continues in, in our schools, uh, civic organizations across the state, again, just to, to keep it fresh in people's minds how important it is uh, to travel safely. To safely. Um, and and that's, that's, that's what we try to do, Gerard, as yeah. you well know, is just I know people probably get tired of the same old message, but if, if we could just see a reduction 
in traffic crashes and a reduction in traffic fatalities, maybe we wouldn't have to discuss it as much. Yeah. Major, I guess the, the other thing is we, we've got these, uh, this, this busy travel going on. We've also got football games, right? So we've got a lot of folks on the roads that are going back and forth to football games, and that can be a problem as well, can it not? Again, and it, and it definitely it puts more it puts more stress on law enforcement agencies around the state yeah. because, as you well know, law enforcement officers are stretched thin. But again, we this is what we sign up for. We sign up to serve and protect, and every agency in the state is going to do that. That is our mission: public safety. Yeah. You know, the other thing that probably gets overlooked, uh, I think, uh, Major, to just the, uh, the average uh, Mississippian is that the men and women of the Highway Patrol that work these crashes and, and, and uh, come upon these fatalities, this has a tremendous emotional uh, impact on them personally, does it not? Well, absolutely, because at the end of the day, every law enforcement officer when they end their shift yeah. and, 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 and they get out of that, that patrol vehicle, they're still human, Gerard. Yeah. They, they have training, and it's expected. You know, officers, we do, we do the job, but you're exactly right. Yeah. We're still human, and w- <laughs> no fatality is, you know, something that an officer wants to have to investigate or deal with, and the families of law enforcement officers sure. and first responders deal with that as well. Are, are there resources available to a major to kind of help them deal and manage through some of these emotional issues? Absolutely, absolutely Gerard. And, and Colonel Randy again and the commissioner, again, are working on a program yeah. to implement into the Department of Public Safety that will address that exact issue. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I think that it's not, uh, it, it's, uh, the way it's reported, it's almost kind of sanitized. And I, and I understand that's the way it has to be, but down there in the trenches, when they come upon these crashes and, and again, these fatalities, I, God bless them. I don't see how they deal with it, honestly. It takes a special individual, and as you said, and we all know this, they sign up for it. But it, it still doesn't diminish the fact that, as you indicated, they're humans, and they got to manage through it. Well, you're right, and I, I think every officer is different, but I can tell you that most officers that I've talked to throughout my 23-year 23, 23 career, yeah. the worst thing about the job is knocking on someone's yeah. door to notify them a loved one's not going to make it home. Gosh, yeah, that's, that's really incredible. Uh, what about our, our ranks of uh, men and women in the Highway Patrol? How are we doing there? I know we're always looking for, for good folks to, to join up and serve. How are we doing there? Well, as you know, we just graduated a class, and those troopers are on their field training uh, program right now. Yeah. And I would say probably in another month they will be out on their own serving and protecting the people of Mississippi. The commissioner and colonel are constantly working on ways to have uh, a, an additional trooper school yeah. uh, to, to fill the ranks so we can go out and just have the manpower necessary to investigate these crashes and, and keep people safe. Is there anything you can share with us, Major, that uh, would be of interest uh, to our audience with respect to uh, initiatives or programs or efforts or uh, just uh, the scope of the highway patrol in general? Well, you know, there's a lot of different, a lot of different divisions that are under the Mississippi Highway Patrol umbrella. Uh, special operations uh, is with with Louisiana officials again with the recovery efforts uh, in Hurricane Ida, uh, and you know the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation stays busy constantly investigating officer-involved shootings or anything that that a law enforcement agency in the state. Uh, calls for MBI to come and investigate. Yeah. So a lot of moving parts uh, within the Mississippi Highway Patrol, you know, our recruiting efforts are ongoing, yeah. and we just ask everyone uh, to keep in touch with social media, keep in touch with the Mississippi Department of Public Safety and Mississippi Highway Patrol social media when it comes to recruiting. 
Yeah. We, will, we will be constantly putting information out to update uh, everyone when it comes to a trooper school, uh, whenever one is approved and when we start it. So we're, yeah. we're looking forward to that. Major, always a pleasure having you on, sir, and, and thanks so much uh, for what you do. And please pass on our, our gratitude to the men and women who serve in the Mississippi Highway Patrol. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Gerard. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. with. 